The D23 collection box is here. Let's open it. All right, I can't wait to get into this opening. This product is coveted, it's valuable, it's hard to get your hands on. However you want to describe this product, it's, it's a collector's dream. So we have secured one of the D23 collection boxes. We're gonna open this together and as I am opening this, I will also just call out and say that I also have done like little to no um, like research or anything like that. Like I, well, I shouldn't say research. Like, I, like what I mean to say is like, I have no doubt that this has been opened on, like on like social media platforms, like all over the place. I wouldn't say all over the place, but like, I'm, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's, it's been opened. Right. And so, but, but like, I want to have like a true, like a true interaction for you all. Right. Like, cause that's the content that I can, provide you, right? Like, I mean, obviously you're gonna see someone open it, be like, oh my gosh, so cool. The one thing that we don't have with this is that we don't have the, I wonder what's inside. Like you can do, you can do research and find out what's inside, right? But like what you can do is have the true love and that feeling of being like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. So like, obviously I know what cards are in here. That's awesome. I, I don't know if there's anything else in here, but um, I'm super excited to to find out and it also looks like we, we have a little bit more cutting to do here All right, that wasn't me fast forwarding to me working through the side tape at all But anyway going into the opening here uh, I'll, I'll give like my my quick thoughts on it stuff like that. But first the big reveal and oh My goodness, okay, I'm gonna be very careful with this box right here. These are absolutely gorgeous man. Look at these I'm seeing these for the first time. Like I, oh my gosh, they're gorgeous. The first thing I'm kind of trying to do is like, look at the foiling on each one of them to kind of understand. Here we go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be very, very, very careful here. Other side of the box. Like I don't even wanna, I don't even wanna like touch these. Like, oh my gosh, I just wanna almost, keep them in the box and I, I did get sealed I did get sealed ones as well so here we're gonna, gonna be very 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 gentle here as we do just a bit of maintenance and as I'm doing this maintenance on each one of these I will say that I also did pick up my copy of the Mickey D23 playful sorcerer so I'll probably like show it in a, in a video at some point. Um, I don't know how that will go. I don't know if we'll do like, like a top, like I haven't done like a top, like, you know, like enchanted collection. I realize it's not technically an enchanted rare, but um, something like that. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know if we'll do something like that or like what kind of content we'll do on those coming up, but very cool. Okay, so let's go and just sort of start and do the card by card here. Actually, like let's let's go like this. Let's go. Let's go like this and first show off the boy himself, the man, the myth, the legend, the Mickey, the Mickey BLT from the first chapter. So so first and foremost, thoughts thoughts with Mickey. I mean, Obviously, like, it's kind of a no-brainer, and by choosing one of two cards, either the Mickey or the Elsa, or at least one of the two characters, Mickey or Elsa, it doesn't really matter what variant. I mean, obviously, the Mickey BLT makes the most sense. Elsa, I, I guess Spirit of Winter would make the most sense with, with Elsa, but you could really do any one of them. I mean, you look at the first D23 that they did with, with Elsa, I mean, they, they did the, I believe that's the uncommon variant of Elsa. Really doing either one of those is going to boost the product value and it, it just makes total sense. So like as far as like was this the right call? Of course it was. Whether whether you look at Mickey as um, <laughs> marketing, you know, marketing genius from Lorcana or the allure and the, the myth and the legend of, of, you know, fans and enthusiasts wanting to prop up the Mickey BLT for for sort of being that unspoken mascot of Lorcana, whether it be the, you know, the, the tournament prize card of Mickey, the first D23 Expo card of Mickey, it, it, it just totally makes sense. So really nothing needs to be said about Mickey. Totally makes sense, huge box check there. 
Going into number two, the, the, the Cinderella Stout Hearted, our Rise of the Floodborne variant. What I will say about Cinderella, I, I, I have two thoughts on Cinderella. The first, it, it pulls me in a direction of like going away from liking the idea of choosing the specific, you know, nomination for the Rise of the Floodborne character. Just from the standpoint that like, it's so hard to be drawn to a certain card when there's another variant of a character, another card of a character that I would covet more. It's, I covet it more and it's also a card that I don't have my hands on yet. And eventually I will either pull that card or, or just purchase that card because that card still eludes me. Um, but, but then I immediately pull back and think to myself, it actually makes perfect sense that they chose this card. And the reason being is that they're really sticking on the theme of, of, of the set, right? With Rise of the Floodborne really being introduced, not, not necessarily fully introduced, but really sort of shining the, the different Floodborne characters, Cinderella Stout Hearted is, is maybe one of the best choices that they could have given as far as a nominee goes. Obviously already has a ton of credibility going for it from you know the tournament standpoint. Prize wall card, top 64, I think, in, in the Lorcana events, uh, the Lorcana challenge events. Um, and then also the play mat, and you know, like it, it makes a lot of sense. So totally understand the card, huge box check. I, I think they did the right thing and, and I'm super excited to see it in, you know, in this variant. So absolutely beautiful card to look at. Most of the cards I would say, like I can immediately find, I wouldn't even say the glass half full, but fine, just like, I totally understand. Like X, Y, Z, like this makes sense. This is probably the one card that I, I, I'll be honest, um, at first, at, you know, first thought when I, when I saw this card as the Inklands representative, the Ursula Deceiver, my first thought was, I don't get it. Um, obviously I understand bringing Ursula into the product. And first and foremost, I'll say, that this has nothing to do with this specific card and this specific artwork, I think it's beautiful. I, I, I think actually this, this artwork to me perceives Ursula in a way that I believe feeds my nostalgia like the most out of like any of the variants of Ursula that I, you know, that I've seen, you know, to this point. I, I really, I really love this artwork that much. So when I saw that it was gonna be one of the representatives, like at first I was like, I love it. And then I, but then I, I really did have to take it back and, and just say to myself like, it is an interesting choice for, for that specific set representative, right? For obvious reasons. And the obvious, first obvious reason is that it could have been the representative in Ursula's Return, right? Now we're gonna get to that card momentarily because I have thoughts on that card, but I will say, the one thing that I, I will say I do understand is that it doesn't necessarily have to be a set representative in terms of like sticking with a set theme. Ursula is one of the most key characters in this first saga in terms of the storytelling of Lorcana, you know, and and really, you know, what that first saga and story brought us all the way up to Ursula's return and her being one of those key characters. So. I totally get it uh, in terms of like, it, to me it feels just slightly, slightly square peg round hole-ish, fitting her into Inklands. Could have certainly seen cover artwork like Jafar, or Stitch, or Piglet, or Peter Pan, or Pongo. Like it could have seen one of those certainly, maybe something else, but I do understand fitting her in and if this is where they felt like they needed to fit her in, I totally get that and, and truly it's, it's an absolutely beautiful card as I'm looking at it right now. So super happy that they did get it in and so, that leads us to the Ursula's Return card being Bruno Madrigal. Now, if if you watched one of our more recent videos that we did, I want to say it was a couple weeks ago. It's when we predicted the Enchanteds for Shimmering Skies. What's so funny is that we obviously predicted the Madrigal family. Like I, I said, like I'm gonna go with Bruno. And I gave reasons behind that. And I did finish by saying like, but I, it could be Mirabelle, it might be both, might be neither, who knows, right? And like, again, I obviously it didn't come to fruition. Like technically neither Bruno nor Mirabelle were enchanted in Shimmering Skies and that, that's totally fine, right? Like again, I've always said, it's not about being right or wrong. It's about, it's about having fun and just being like, oh, I wanna see this, I wanna see that. Like I want, like this would be cool to see. I think they're gonna do this. It's just part of the fun, right? It's part of the fun of the hobby. But what is interesting is that in a very roundabout way, it, it's almost kind of like it, neither one of them happened, but we did kind of get both of them in their own ways, right? 
Obviously you have, you know, Bruno being within the D23 collection set, and then you have Mirabelle being our future set championship promo that you're going to receive for what is now top eight with the next iteration of set championships, the next, next phase of set championships coming out. So I, I, I think it's a, it's just an amazing choice. It's an absolutely beautiful card. I am all for seeing greens and blues and purples as a part of alternate art enchanted foiling. Like I'm, I'm just all about it. And that leads us to our current set that we're on right now, Shimmering Skies and Vanellope. I, this might come as a surprise to, to some what I'm about to say here, but I actually think that this, other than the Mickey BLT, which is almost like, it's, it's almost like a guarantee. It's almost like no, nobody can be first because it, you almost have to reserve the spot for that. Like it's just a no brainer putting Mickey, Mickey BLT in that first chapter slot and you just have a product that like everyone's gonna look at them and be like, I need that product. But I really like the choice for Vanellope and it kind of has to do with what we've spoken about with Inklands, etc. where this is a huge set for Vanellope and it's a huge set for Wreck-It Ralph in general. Um, I mean, you don't just, you, you, you have multiple characters coming to the forefront here with, you know, with Ralph and, and Felix and, and just multiple, multiple shine on this specific, you know, on this specific IP that I really do like the choice here. Also, her Enchanted absolutely beams. Like, I do feel like even, even a lot of y'all from in, in the comments, I feel like when I asked that question, when we did the, you know, the, like, just let me know in the comments, like what Enchanted's you're most excited about, etc. I feel like I heard a lot of them and I heard almost all of them because how, how could you not, right? Everybody wants their, you know, everybody has their own nostalgia that they bring to the table. But I heard some, I heard a lot of, you know, a lot of Arthur, a lot of Olaf, a lot of Robin Hood, uh, you know, just uh, many of those, a lot of Scar, etc. The two that I feel like I heard the most were Mufasa, can't blame you, and also Vanellope. So I, I do feel like uh, whether it's, whether it's just luck of the draw with our specific community of all of us who are speaking amongst ourselves or if that's representation for the broader community itself feels like they're they're on a very good pulse with um with what the community is excited about so it's amazing to see the card great artwork great choice and finally leading into a card that we that we have yet to know what the set is oswald makes his way into the Lorcana universe, for me to even have an opinion about this card would be completely pulling stuff out of thin air. We have no idea what this set is. We have no idea what it's called. We have no idea what the theme is. So for me to sit here and be like, I love it, I don't love it, can't possibly tell you. But one thing that I can pull and that we can pull from looking at this card that I do find interesting and I think it was a bold choice from you know from Lorcana going in this direct from Ravensburger going in this direction with Lorcana and with this card with this specific product the black and white the colorless card right looking at these enchanted rares and uh, the enchanted foiling and I understand there might be like different foiling patterns I'm not saying it's the exact enchanted but looking at the alternate art like you know full art foiling, enchanted, you know, foiling of a card. Typically you find that you want to put those with bright colors, like, you know, cards that are beaming, you know, the sort of things like that. Going with that specific card when you have a whole, I, I would assume, 200-ish cards to choose from is a very, very interesting choice. Now, there's probably like a one per less than one percent chance that this is true, but again, be, like we can't say whether that's a good decision or not because, for all we know, the entire set could be colorless. Like we we have no idea. Like it, it's and again, it's probably not going to happen, but like we don't know. So like the only thing I can say about this card is that obviously it's beautiful, it's timeless, and it's a wonderful, just a wonderful choice to put as part of such an amazing product and an amazing piece of Lorcana history. Um, but a very interesting choice going with a colorless card and, and it'll just be interesting to see how the market reacts to that card. And I, I know I'm gonna be interested to see it, but as I look at it now, and as I look at every single one 
of these enchanteds right now. It's it's just absolutely a, a privilege to look at each and every one of them, and 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 I can't wait to see um, how the market accepts them and how the community accepts accepts them and. Um, just what they're going to do in the market and, and in the hobby going forward and, and if they're going to continue to make products like these going forward. But regardless, absolute privilege to open and, and super happy that we could, could do it on the channel together. All right, all that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you so much for tuning in to an amazing product opening. Don't get to do these very often, but when we do, it's always special. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel to get in the action for more great Lorcana content coming out. Be on the lookout for a very special episode coming this Sunday to celebrate 1,000 subscribers. Thank you all so much for the overwhelming support. We're eternally grateful for you all, and we'll see you on the other side. Peace out.